says you can't make the best build in the game even better. Oh yes, hello my fellow sorcerers and welcome to absurdity beyond absurdity, ridiculousness beyond ridiculousness, and a third thing beyond a third thing. This is peak ball lightning because hey, it already disintegrates everything that it touches, but it could disintegrate here. But more than that, you know, we could be going a little bit faster while doing it. And by a little bit faster, I mean racing through every dungeon or, well, any given thing you're doing at a hundred miles an hour with infinite endless metamorphosis dodges that on top of a brand new synergy, I'll be showing you that's a little bit, maybe perhaps literally broken, turns this already stupidly effective build into uh, something that quite frankly is so overtuned for every bit of content currently available in the game that it's kind of a joke as you're seeing by me absolutely blitzing through this like tier 95 or so. So without further ado then how exactly have uh, we turned ball lightning, I guess not up to 11 by this point, up to like, I don't know, we'll go with 17 or something. And essentially, this is it. If I was level 100, it would still be this version of ball lightning. If I had my last, like, 30 or so paragon points, it would still be this ball lightning. And don't worry, you will get a full paragon board here. This really kind of is the min-max. This is perfect affixes, this is perfect gear, this is perfect strategy, perfect setup, and, well, the perfect build to perfectly stake our claim as the pinnacle of Diablo 4 in Season 2. So without further ado then, let's take the Arclash Ball Lightning Hybrid I presented last time and evolve it into its final, ultimate form. Our ascension into Godia Godhood then begins as per usual with the skill tree and we get one rank of Arclash. This is just so we can literally cast it, it's the perfect filler and it does add to our overall cooldown reduction as well as amp up the damage of ball lightning thanks to the attack speed it will generate with vampiric powers. We no longer need any real damage to come from it though so we can save four points by by not going full in here. We do, however, want to grab one rank of Firebolt because, yes, now, perhaps sadly, but when you see the damage, maybe not so sadly, we are going for that burning synergy for the extra hard critting and indeed the burning paragon that we'll also get to with the Firebolt enchantment. It just adds so much damage that it's kind of hard to ignore now that we've solved a few other problems that was preventing us from taking it in the past versions. Down to core, we want a two into potent warding. This would lovely to be three, but we simply don't have the spare pointage, so it's only getting the two. Then we grab a chain lightning and take it down to enhanced and destructive just to put more crackling energy on the floor. Technically, you will probably have enough crackling energy anyway without this, so you could get rid of these two and reassign them, maybe put that third point in potent warding, that is up to you. But I have left it in, because it's just incredible to see a sea of crackling energy. This also makes up our second enchantment slot, because we want these free chain lightnings to be thrown out for a couple of reasons that will become apparent. Over to your defensives, where we get get just the one rank in elemental achievement so we can get the cooldown resetting, fill up your glass cannon for the free massive multiplicative increase to damage, and given we're so hard to kill now, the uh, damage extra taken essentially isn't a factor. Grab your teleport as just the best thing ever, the mobility, the raiment stun, uh, the extra mana from Tybalt's will, it's just, oh, and it has quite literally never been better than in Season 2, despite already being one of, if not the best single ability 
Sorcerer has. We go over to Shimmering for the damage reduction, and then we grab Flame Shield, and this time we take it to Mystical for the mana reduction while it's on. It just lets us pump out a few more ball lightnings, and we kind of don't need the heal because we kill everything so instantly fast that we're in very little danger, and anything that can kill us is probably a random BS one-shot in a Nightmare Dungeon that's too high level for you technically that you couldn't have prevented with the heal anyway. Then we, well, don't take uh, Frost Nova, which you might find interesting, but I will explain why once we're done with the tree. Over to Conjuration, where we grab the Align the Elements just to get to max rank Mana Shield for great constant damage reduction, and then Protection for our Barrier Synergy and more Not to Die Pleaseness. We get our 3-3 in Conjuration Mastery just for the amped damage when we throw out our Lightning Spears with Unstable Currents, and for when we have our Ice Blades active, which is fairly often with how much cooldown reduction we have. We want this to go to enhanced and then summoned so it can apply its cooldown reduction to the rest of our skills. This means more teleports, more flame shields, more unstable currents, and just more death dealt to everything that dares be on the same screen of us. It also lets us do something else very neat that again will become apparent when we get to a later section. Over to your mastery where we go all all in on the star of the show ball lightning get your enhanced which is just ludicrous damage and then wizards to start the sea of crackling energy which thanks to getting 3-3 and invigorating conduit is a big source of our near infinite mana then over at your ultimates we want the unstable currents it is a massive spike while it's on it's on most of the time the attack speed is ridiculous feeding in to enhanced and the infinite crackling energy pulses is is nice too, coupled with our key passive that should be overflowing energy just to have as many teleports and unstable currents as possible, constantly pulsing and reducing out to every enemy around us. And then yes, one rank in coursing just to get the full movement speed, which does translate to damage and, you know, just clear faster, and then full electrocution for even more damage reduction. So, uh, there we have our skill tree. So what's actually kind of changed and why is in the hybrid ball lightning style here. Well, firstly, we just have a massive amount of increased pure ball lightning damage thanks to the focus on critting often and critting hard with every tick of this delicious orb. That is achieved via actually putting in the firebolt enchantment, which then obviously, yes, lets you take full advantage over devouring blaze, which I now realize should have come up during the skill tree section, so yeah, get your points in devouring blaze. This is still a sizable increase, even if it's less than it once was. We also then don't really need the usual enchantment of ball lightning spawning more ball lightnings, because it's kind of overkill, it does less extra damage to get a few extra lucky hit ball lightnings than to be able to go into burning synergy and critting extra hard. It also means we don't need any focus on lucky hit, which means we can kind of drop any need to get lucky hit, which means more room for more damage where lucky hit used to be. But the playstyle remains very similar. We just cast our ball lightning while swiping our R clash whenever we can't cast ball lightning. That is just the general flow as you blast round. But that blast round is what's very much different and key this time, because what we have going for us is, well, four charges of boom, 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 boom. And that is so good. And if you look how fast those charges come back, we just have another three as we fight. This kind of gives us that endless source of just blitzing through dungeons alongside teleport. You see just how fast we're moving and just how many dodges we can do constantly. It really is something special, and apparently I just completed a tree of whispers. Okay, so how are we actually achieving this 
endless, no cooldown, constant blitz sprint dash setup. Well, as I'm sure you're aware, the actual dash itself is from Metamorphosis, the vampiric power that makes sure evade that dash and puts vampire curse on everyone that you pass, and everyone takes damage, and it also makes you unstoppable. It's real good. The unstoppable tying in to Tybalt's will to give you mana as well, and the damage boost, that's all great. But what it also synergizes perfectly with is the Oculus. Now, we'll get more into this when we get to gear, but this gives you the teleport enchantment, sure, but when you have Metamorphosis on, it actually overrides it and you remain in control of your dash. So then you might ask, why use the Oculus? You're missing out on attack affixes on a regular wand and indeed uh, the extra legendary aspect. Well, the plus damage is nice, uh, the ranks of teleport are fun, you can use it constantly, only a seven second cooldown even with raiment, but what it gives you is the extra three evade charges and your attacks reduce your evade cooldown by 1.2 seconds. That is huge, because it means that we will be constantly resetting our evade thanks to how much we're attacking, or coupled with the extra charges, it just means we get to go through dungeons like that. You see how fast we can go while killing everything, because the ball lightning just rotates, so we just dash on top of every enemy's face over and over and over again, while the dashes themselves power the build both in damage and resources. It's just super fun and super quick, and it really is peak nightmare dungeoning and just general operating. So past that, the other main difference, other than yes, plus your frame shield when you think you might die, constantly teleport at enemies for raiment, use your unstable currents whenever there's a big group of enemies, blast out more damage and on bosses. The other change of note then, as you are seeing on the bars and from the skill tree, is ice blades. So why ice blades? Well, the thing is, since we no longer need Frost Nova, as we just don't need anything it can do, we get all all of our vulnerable from vampiric powers and paragon board and we get all of our mana from well many other sources it just kind of is well superfluous everything dies in the stun of raiment so we don't need to freeze it either so we've gained a spot on the ability bar so basically you kind of have three choices either still give that slot the kind of useless frost nova give it the ice armor for more tankiness or give it either Lightning Spear again, or Ice Blades. We want it to be something that's a cooldown, because we want the barrier synergy from protection, and we want it to be something that's fairly easy to just press and forget about. So which one of these is more useful? Well, the extra stunning everyone is nice, but it's also kind of not needed, because we're just again blitzing on top of everyone and blowing them up with ball lightning. Whereas if we look at Ice Blades, yeah, they do an okay bit of damage, they add to our vulnerable uptime, which is nice, and then they put a bit of their cooldown reduction on the rest of the abilities, which is also nice. But truthfully, all of this is kind of minor. The main thing that tipped it to Ice Blades is because we will be using a very certain glyph, that being Elementalist, which means we need a source of cold damage, which comes from our Ice Blades, so we can get that full 3-stacked 15% multiplicative damage, the fire damage from the Flame Shield, and then the lightning damage from, you know, everything else. So it kind of ended up being the most logical choice to give us the most power with the least amount of investment, both skill-wise and thought-wise. So that's kind of where we end up being. So with that kind of context for the key changes and why they're so effective, let's talk about our gear then. We want to, as last time, conceited on our offhand for more damage while you have a barrier. We will always have a barrier, so this is just a huge permanent increase. We then, of course, want the star aspect, which makes the ball lightning go round us, gravitational, land do more damage, this thing is what enables it to all work. We also then want Elementalist. This is one of the shifts to give our ball lightning extra crit chance. We will have more than 100 mana most
most of the time, so this, coupled with our natural crit, gives us a near 100% crit chance on ball lightning. And with how much crit damage we're packing, now thanks to burning synergy and a few other things, it's kinda silly how effective this is, and definitely better than the aspect of control that we've dropped for it. On your necklace, you want your disobedience, as it's our greatest source of defense, it's what keeps you alive against those melee hits, especially in high nightmares, and generally, it's the best place to put it. Now, technically, if you think you can get away with only one defensive aspect, put disobedience on your helmet, and then you can put an offensive aspect on your neck, in which case it should be elementalist, and then this elementalist should be control again, but I think you will really appreciate and need the extra armor quicker that you get from disobedience on your neck, coupled with then ever living on your helmet, as every enemy will always be vulnerable, this is just a really nice chunk less damage taken. Besides, technically speaking, if you are feeling comfortable enough with the content you're doing, you're not worried about dying, well then you actually just want to put God Slayer Crown on, which is even better than the swap around of the aspects. So if you think you're safe, put God Slayer on your helmet and then leave the Disobedience on your neck and the Elementalist on your ring. Then we want Accelerating on your gloves to get that extra attack speed, which not only means more ball lightnings faster, it means they're hitting a lot harder as the attack speed multiplies their tick rate up. This is why we have the chain lightning uh, enchantment, as when it fires out, as uh, you just saw, it will crit and it will trigger this and keep it with essentially 100% uptime. Then we move over to Uniques, the usual and always Raiment of the Infinite for that sweet stun group death, especially with ball lightning pulling everyone into your circle is really what you want, and the glass cannon is very very nice too. We want Tibalt's Will, this will give us a, well, big increase to damage, but more importantly, 50 mana every time we become unstoppable. Now, sadly, it really is become unstoppable, because Metamorphosis makes you unstoppable for 4 seconds. It means until that 4 seconds is up and you can become unstoppable again, you can't re-trigger this, otherwise you would have literally infinite capped mana all always with Tibalt's will, but it's a shame that that's not the case. But it's still absolutely brilliant and a definitive core of this setup as it solves so much of your mana problems without needing to solve them elsewhere, which is a lot harder to do. Then you want Esu's heirloom, there's no real question here. The mana cost reduction is excellent, the crit strike damage is excellent, the movement speed is excellent, both in clear speed and the damage it translates to, and then the increased crit chance is wonderful as well. It really does get quite high, especially when your movement speed procs from other sources. And, as I said, the Oculus is the wand of choice. Now, it's not strictly necessary, this one, but it is what lets you take this to literal hyperspeed with your constant dashes that come off cooldown instantly because ball lightning makes them with the attacks reduce evade cooldown without needing to get that on your boots. Also, each metamorphosis, because of Esu's heirloom, gives you 75% more run speed, which is just a lovely synergy too. Then, for your gems, you want your more crit damage to vulnerable in your weapons, more health in your armor, and more armor in your jewelry. When it comes to affixes, then, it is the following. Crit chance, crit damage, mana cost reduction, chance to restore primary resource, resource generation, cooldown reduction, attack speed, lucky hit chance, and then lightning critical hit damage, and then just general damage. Skills wise, you want ranks of mastery, you want ranks of defensives, and you want ranks of glass cannon, you also want ranks of devouring blaze. Then generally, int damage to close, vulnerable damage, all 
all of those extra, some maximum life there around is nice, and definitely you want percent armor on your helmet specifically, as that is a big increase to your survivability. Then, vampiric powers. Anticipation is a no-brainer, being out on stable currents 20% more often is just so good. Then, over to Ravenous, permanent passive near 60% extra attack speed is broken for, again, every build that doesn't channel, 60% more born lightning, 60% faster ticking ball lightnings, it's everything we could ever want, and it will go up to the max bonus of 80% in combat when all of our bonus move speed procs from various sources. Then we want Moonriser to work with Arclash. This stacking up to an extra 20% attack speed is excellent, because not only does it mean 20% more ball lightning casts, it means they tick 40% faster from the passive. And then the extra movement speed when you go into the rage is faster clear speed, and then even more attack speed thanks to it being converted by Ravenous. This right here is why it's still worth having Arclash on your bars, even at only one rank, because slowly cycling through this buff is huge for the ball lightning damage. Then we have Prey on the Weak, more damage to vulnerable enemies, and enemies cursed are vulnerable. We are making enemies cursed with our metamorphosis, and we're just doing a lot of vulnerable damage in general. We're also making enemies vulnerable via another method that we'll get to on the Paragon board. And then, yes, as you know, the metamorphosis to give us a source of vampiric curse, to give us ridiculous literal clear speed, and to just generally be permanently unstoppable. This is so, so nice. You will never be CC'd again. To the Paragon, then, as the final little bit of this, let's begin, well, at the beginning. Who could have seen that coming? Our original board, then, grab your two rare nodes with all of the magic nodes around them. Don't skimp on your resist to elements and maximum health. You will need it to not get one shot deleted when pushing hard content. Over to the first glyph zone, and again, both rare nodes and the magics around it, except the stats, as you won't need them. And then your first glyph is going to be that elementalist. Amping up the non-physical damage and resist to all elements is glorious and a big increase to damage, as is the 15% more from fire, cold, and lightning, so make sure to get the 40 in to activate it. Going up then, we want to go in to Enchantment Master. Here you will just get the trifecta of so much non-physical damage. Go up and then do this uh, little L-shape, get everything on the way, and enjoy your huge spike to your numbers. On the other side, get your resistance to elements and the magic nodes too, and in here, put reinforced. Not only is, again, amping the non-physical damage into resistance great for you, that 15% damage reduction while you have a barrier, which you always do, will really be felt and go a long way to keeping you alive. Then, head right and go into our burning instinct board for our burning synergy thanks to Firebolt Enchantment. Go straight down to the Glyph slot, where we can then grab Cinders for more damage to burning enemies, and then also Smoldering Embers to take less damage from burning enemies. This is a huge increase to our survivability, and another great reason to work in Burning Synergy to Ball Lightning. In the Glyph slot here, then, you want Destruction. 150% more crit damage is ludicrous, on top of making enemies take 12% more damage from you for just a little extra bonus, because why not? Get this, get it to level 15, and get every single bit of dexterity that you can in range, and enjoy the results. Then go over here and get Kindling 2 for even more damage. Then we head south into our next board, which will be your Frigid Fate board for your extra vulnerable damage. Go left to be begin with, get oppressive, and then all of the magic nodes around it, then head down to the glyph slot, get weakness on top of chilling 2, and then we go to the glyph where it's going to be adept. Get the 40 out of 40 ints, 
so you can get increased sized ball lightning and do get it to level 15 and eventually do get every bit of intelligence to pump the damage to ball lightning as much as possible. This is why if I was actually level 100 and had the points to do this and this glyph was level 21, I would kill Lilith before she could even fly off once in the second phase, which is just silly. Then you want to head right, get the damage reduction from guarded and the magic nodes relative to it, and then we head into our final board, which will be your static surge board. Head straight up, get overwhelming and the magic nodes around it, veer off downwards to get static surge. This helps with our mana consumption, as it gives us a little bit back every time we spend 87 mana and then cast chain lightning. We're casting chain lightning from the enchantment slot, which is another reason we have it, and it also means that all of our auto chain lightnings make enemies vulnerable, so we get even more vulnerable uptime, which is another reason we no longer need Frost Nova. Then I am out of points, but if you are level 100 instead of 92 like me, you will continue on right here, head down, get incapacitate, and the magic nodes that are relative to damage around it. You'll go down here, get electro just for the intelligence, and then you will go down here and get paralyzing for the extra maximum mana and the magic nodes around it. Then you will spend your remaining points on ideally going up here getting all of this resist to elements in this little cluster and then going up and getting enchantment master. Or, and slash if you still have more points, you want to go up here on Burning Instinct, get the extra armor and this damage reduction from elites, and then you will definitely be out of points. In this final glyph slot then, you want our lovely crackling energy charged, just for that permanent stacked 15% more multiplicative damage, and that will see you with a complete Paragon Bard. So, uh, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is really it. Kind of peak, min-max, level 100, perfect, fully complete ball lightning in its final and deadliest form. Well, final and fastest form. Technically, if you gave up the Oculus Metamorphosis combo, you could do a little bit more damage, but that's really just not worth giving up the speed and comfort of being able to do this everywhere you go. It's just so, so good. I hope you have enjoyed this, and indeed are enjoying being Sorcerer in Season 2 still, because it really is one hell of a good time. I will be back shortly with something that I hope works, because if if it does, it's going to be so, so special, so look forward to that. But now then, like you've enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more, consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye